Excuse me. <laughs> so we're back here in the shop. It's been like 15 days, feels like. It's been 84 years. Um, so welcome back to Recoil Outdoor. Uh, today we do not have the TJ here. We actually are working on the Waggy. Um, the TJ is over at Peace Performance. So Ben Peace uh, that you guys saw on the last couple of videos, he's got it at his shop. He's just wrapping up some things behind the scenes. It's closer for Seth Brown to get to it during the day as well. So they're able to kind of tag team it and get some stuff worked out on it. Um, we found a, a few issues with it that Wes actually figured out and uh, we just didn't have, I mean, our heads were not clear enough to be able to you know, find it with the amount of time that we've sank into this and the effort and work and everything. So, um, it's over there while we're getting stuff done on the waggy. So, um, we've got a few major things to do on the waggy. One is the power steering pump bracket that Seth Brown's working on. That's a big one that I'm putting a GM power steering pump on a Mercedes diesel. It's not made to go on there. We're making it work. Um, we'll, we'll say it's a common swap. Um, so the other one is I'm mating a 6L90 transmission to a 205. He said meat. <laughs> um, this has been like a freaking pain in the ass. So the adapter set that I got here is from Advanced Adapters. So every 6L90 has this tail shaft, but Advanced Adapters put these holes clocked in it. For like a 205 and you can also put an atlas transfer case bolted up to it so <clears throat> that was all great and everything except for whenever i went to go make the t case to it it was actually clocked in a stock chevy angle so the transfer case was actually like hanging below the frame rails so now i have re-drilled it um, retapped some threads in one of the adapters now we're going to clock it back up and put it all back together and see if it's back at the correct angle. And hopefully the cross member that I built will just bolt right in. Um, and then that'll be going in here soon. And I'm also working on the harness. So we went to, I'll just pull it out fast. So in order to run the transmission behind an all mechanical motor you have to have an input of a throttle position sensor and rpm signal those are the two biggest things that the transmission needs to work so you still have the tcmsi transmission you can't get rid of that like you can on a 4l80 or something you can run a standalone harness so i have to run a piggyback which is made by Sold by Zero Gravity Performance, but it's made by PCS. So this allows me to run paddle shift. Um, I have a tap up, tap down shifter, sport shift. Um, I can change. Basically, they've unlocked the engineering side of this transmission and the software to where I can go in and mess with everything on it. So um, hopefully I've got kind of a base tune in it. And once it goes in, I can get Ben over here. We can go do some street runs and actually get it fine-tuned. It does have a self-learning curve to it, but it's like a... Uh, it more so, it's adaptive table. So you, you set in your base tune and that just makes it makes small percentage increases from there. So um, that's what I'm using to control the transmission. This is the only computer that I have in the whole Waggy. Everything else is 100% mechanical. So... Fingers crossed for the mountains that doesn't go out. <laughs> um, so that's what we're working on now. So follow along. We're, we've got a few things going on tonight. So we're going to have some fun. So I was trying to figure out. I was talking with a lot of guys on how to get a RPM signal for this uh, computer to work properly. And I can't remember exactly what signal the om606 crank sensor has um they said rpm signal so i was just gonna use the tack then i called them and it was like yeah no it's too radical of a signal you need to use something like the crank sensor it's more of a pure signal so 
then I'll have to convert from whatever the OM606 is, so Google that, figure out what, what signal that is, and then convert it to a square pulse wave signal. Um, in doing so, we have this little module right here, as you can barely see. I've got two wires coming off of it. So I had this all fancy and heat shrunk and everything, and then I forgot what the two wires were because I, I did all this back in August. I built the harness for it. So it's a little circuit. So <clears throat> just a few days ago, I go to put it in. I was like, oh crap, I don't know where these two wires are. So cut off this heat shrink and realized that I forgot to put in the voltage regulator. So the voltage regulator is this little guy. And basically, so you've got an adjustment right here that you can rotate. And you flip it over, you've got your voltage hot out, your ground in, your hot in, which is your 12 volts. And then over here, you have all of your different variables of voltage that you can use. So if you want to use a fixed voltage, say, so I need five volts to run this um, converter. So I need to cut the bridge going to the adjustment portion to just use the fixed voltage. If I don't cut the bridge, then I have to adjust the voltage. So I thought I cut the bridge. I have soldered this thing like eight times. And every time I do, I keep ripping off. So you have to solder right here. I keep ripping that lead off. And so it basically makes it useless for me when I do that. I've done it eight times. Well, this one, I got it perfect. I put in my relief there, you know, and, and there's my wire. I went to go, I hooked it up to power, put the voltmeter on it, and it read like 2.8 volts. So I, dang it. So I was like, well, I just forgot to cut the bridge on the adjustment. So then I go to cut the bridge and I cut the wrong one. And I think there's some solder there. I cut the wrong one somewhere and it uh, basically rendered it useless. So there's no power coming out of it anymore. So I just cut the wrong, wrong bridge there. Um, so now I've got to redo this entire thing. But basically, I'm gonna hook this back up. You know, I'll trim all the wires, make it nice and everything, and then I'll hook it up to there. I can run 12 volts to this, put five volts to the converter, and then that will take the signal off of the crank sensor, which runs on the Mercedes flywheel, because I still have that. And then that'll convert the RPM signal to what the TCM needs to run the GM transmission. And then you'll also see down here, this is coming in a later video, um, but I've got a fancy throttle position sensor that's mocked up right now. Um, when I said Ben Peace can do some uh, 3D printing, he 3D printed me that body. I basically gave him one that was already done. I called them up, it's like, hey, can I recreate this? And they're like, yeah, no, no problem. He recreated that. He did not have a file or anything. He took all the measurements, did it all himself. He inputted a couple of bearings that I wanted, um, but he talked to you about how he made it stronger, what the you know nitty gritty details are on that. Um, but that's my throttle position sensor. That's where I'm getting my RPM. And then uh, everything else is pretty easy going. So I think I'm gonna tackle this, try and resolder this little dude at him, a voltage regulator, while Seth over here gets done with his power steering pump bracket. So I've already built the front, or the start of the front. I've actually got to redo it to bring the, uh, this up and grab this other hole too. Um, and get, I'm gonna get some more meat around this bolt hole. But essentially this is the front, and then imagine this comes around over the front of the power steering pump. So it'll be two bolts here, and these are existing holes on the front of this Mercedes engine. Um, and then on the side, I'm using some more existing holes and I'm, uh, I've got part of it done, the two mounting tabs. And then I'm about to cut a plate that will then come over and grab two additional spots on the back. So it's supported front and back, all with current bolt holes on everything. Um, and the only welding that'll be done in theory will be where it bolts on to these two bolts here on the back. Um, and then it should be well supported to not deflect 
and move around and be, you know, in line with everything. So hopefully, uh, all those ideas are right. And, uh, we only have to do this one more time. See how it goes.